Okay, so full steam ahead on with chapter 12. Oh, and the chapter's called Full Speed Ahead. <laughs> uh, of course, I'm going to tell you, I just did that last bit for effect. I hope you're impressed. I snicked back, sneak, I nipped back over to Trenty's place and landed on the window. Scorcher's room was empty, completely empty, apart from the furniture. Do you get my drift? Of course you do. Scorch was in jail, but more to the point, all his charioteer racing gear had gone missing. That was because Perilous had pinched it and gone off to the circus to take Scorch's place in the, charioteer, in the chariot races. By this time, Flavia had alerted Chrysius and Hysteria, and the whole family was searching fruitlessly for the boy. I say fruitlessly, but I did notice that Hysteria was holding a banana. <laughs> oh, crop bag, I am so funny sometimes. Go on, give us a biscuit. I thought I'd better put him out of his misery, so I floated back to the villa. I landed out in the atrium by the fountain, flapped and clapped my wings, cleared my throat, <clears throat> and made an announcement. Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears, I said, and then realised that was about something else, so I began again. In any case, I had enough ears of my own, so why would I want to borrow someone else's? Listen up. Everyone perilous has gone um, to the circus. He's planning to take Scorch's place in the race. Flavia screamed and then fainted. Oh no, my son, he'll be killed. Splop, that's her fainting. Chrysis ran to her and yelled at Flippers Floppers. Fetch some water and throw it over her. Hurry! Flippers rushed to the kitchen, came tearing back with a big bowl, tripped over his own sandals and threw water all over Chrysis. Not me, Flavia! Um, drip, drippled Chrysis, trying to wring out bits of his toga. Fusia fetched some water and this time managed to, managed to half drown Flavia, who came to spluttering and making strange arm movements because she thought she'd fallen into a swimming pool. She struggled to her feet. Come, we must get to the circus, she cried. Oh, perilous. So off they all went. They were running. I was flapping. Have you ever tried running while wearing a toga? No, neither have I. But it's very difficult, as I lost count of the number of times they tripped over, some, over themselves or trod on someone else's toga and fell over. It's a wonder we got to the circus at all. But we did, and we were just in time to hear the announcer yell out, um, about the second race. And now you'll prepare yourself. Young Scorcher in the green colours is racing his first ever race against three professionals. Let's see what he can do. Trumpeteers, get ready. Blah, 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 went the trumpeteers. The white flag dropped and they were off. You've never seen so much dust or heard such a roar from the crowd. Perilous was the last to get started. He looked terribly nervous and was going to have to make up an awful lot of ground. I know, I said horses were just like goats, but these horses were, well, they were a lot more extremely horsely horses. The other three teams were charging ahead, skidding round the first corner and heading up the straight to the second. Perilous was hopeless. His chariot, uh, ch chariot was all over the place. The horses were frothing and foaming, had no idea what they, where they were going. Poor kid. Scorcher's helmet was two sizes too big and kept falling down over his eyes. Poor Perilous couldn't see where he was going. He kept trying to push his helmet back and that only left him with one hand on the reins. There was a mighty roar and groan as the red chariot crashed out of the race, hurling the rider to the ground where he almost got run over by the white team. Shipwreck! yelled the crowd. Now Perilous was catching them up but it was slow work and only two laps left. Come on, Perilous, there must be something you can do. Oh, a little idea just came into Maximus Intelligentimus's brain. Hmm, why not, I thought. So I took to my wings and as I just flapped along, minding my own business, when all of a sudden, oops, almost flew straight into the horse's right ear. The horse, which belonged to Team Blue, shook its head at me, stuck out its tongue and spat. He did. How disgusting. He spat at me. And unfortunately, he was so busy doing that that uh, he didn't look where he was going. And he crashed into his companion horse. And for a moment, they all came to 
to a dead stop. Meanwhile, the white team went charging ahead with Perilous in hot pursuit. Two corners to go. Come on, Perilous. As they headed into the first corner, Perilous tried to squeeze around the outside, but the white chariot held its ground and sped away from him. He yelled at his pounding pair of thundering, sweating beasts. Come on, you two. I've ridden goats that are faster than you. Huh? went the two horses, looking at each other. We'll show you, you young whippersnapper. And they plunged ahead at full steam and full snort. Not to mention full snot, judging by what was falling out of their nostrils as they hammered around the corner with their flashing hoofs. The last corner and Perilous took the tight inside line, the most dangerous line to take because it was where, the char where his chariot was most likely to keel over or crash into the other chariot. There was a dreadful squeak as the chariots came together and almost locked wheels. I closed my eyes. I couldn't bear it. There was a roar from the crowds. I opened them again. Perilous was through. He was heading for the winning post. He'd done it. He'd done it. He'd done it. He'd done it. Did I say um, he'd done it? I think I did. He had won. Actual, actual fact. Factually, won Q E blooming D. There was wild cheers all around. Everyone was chanting, Scorcher, Scorcher, Scorcher. Perilous was carried shoulder high by the green team to the winner's platform. He looked a bit embarrassed and wouldn't take his helmet off because he knew everyone would then see that he wasn't Scorcher. An awkward moment, hey? Definitely. Come on, lad, said the race organiser. Take your helmet off. I can't, Perilous muttered. I've got nits. The organiser burst out laughing. The boy's got nits, he yelled. And the whole crowd cheered as if nits were the best thing ever. Which, they're not. But they are quite nice to nibble. What I might call a bit... A, a tasty tidbit. Perilous had won the race. And by doing so, he had also won Scorcher, his place in the green team. Even Chrysius, if not actually cheering, was, cer was certainly looking a bit more cheerful. Meanwhile, just across the road from the circus, Maximus, in a dark and smelly jail, there was Scorcher himself, looking very puzzled. He had heard all the cheers from the circus. He had heard his own name being chanted. Scorcher had won, but Scorcher was in jail, wasn't he? No wonder he was confused. Poor Scorcher. Go on, give him a biscuit. Crack. And one more chapter to go, which I'm going to read shortly, and you can listen to it. Take care. Bye.